and welcome to Discovery E Engineering's Chat with Changemakers. I'm your host, Enrique. I'm a 10th grader in Florida and president of my school's SHEP chapter, which is a society of Hispanic professional engineers. Each month, I welcome a different guest from the engineering community. And today, I'm chatting with James Doherty. James is an electronic test technician at RTX. James, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Hello, everyone. Hi, anyway, Dave. Dave. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to kick things off by asking James a few questions to get to know a little bit more about him. Additionally, you guys can ask questions too by typing them in the questions in the Q&A box below, and we will save time to answer as many as we can. Okay, let's get started, James. So my first question is, can you please tell us uh, what RTX does? So RTX is the largest aerospace and defense company in the world. Uh, we build a lot of components. Um, uh, Collins Aerospace, Pratt & Whitney, uh, also Raytheon is all together. Uh, we build antennas, high-power microwave circuits, um, robotics, lasers, um, engines, all for commercial and military. Wow, that's super interesting that you guys are, are just one company that's like working in a, in a big, large spectrum. So uh, I do know that you're an electric test technician. What do they exactly do? So we test components on a daily basis. Um, we operate robotic machinery and also software. So we load components onto our test units. The robotics, um, they, also, they load the machinery. Um, we get test, test pass fail. <clears throat> daily that's about it that sounds super interesting though that you guys are able to test the different circuits and such could can, oh, yeah. can you tell us about your educational background and career path that led to rtx yeah um career path i uh, started when i was really young um got some experience in doing a paper route um i was up in the northeast uh mainly connecticut when i got my first paper route so it was throughout the winter um, taught me a good good path and keeping everything pretty level. Um, from there, I uh, graduated through high school, um, moved on into auto mechanics, um, became master certified in my first two years of being an automotive mechanic. Um, in the midst of that, I uh, ended up joining the Army, uh, tested really good on my test scores, became an Apache helicopter crew chief. Um, we deployed overseas while deployment. I decided I wanted to further my education. Um, I hooked up with Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, got my associate's degree through them. Um, also a lot of certificates throughout the way, um, kept further in my education and doing a lot of research and background and ended up here at Raytheon a couple of years ago. Wow, uh, thank you for your service. It, I we really appreciate it. And we have actually we have a Q and A uh from the audience from a seventh grader science class in Austin, Texas. What is the most challenging project you have worked on? Most challenging project I've ever worked on uh, in my life. Yeah, I would say. Uh, so while I was in the army, we brought up a helicopter um from the hurricane of Katrina. Uh, we pulled it out of the mud in Louisiana. Uh, it was a full rebuild. Um, so that went down to <clears throat> sub-level components where we had to clean, repair, um, and retest all the components to make sure they worked. Um, that project lasted about three years. Um, that helicopter returned to service uh, with the Army in Louisiana years later. Wow, that's crazy. Three years. So from your experience as a technician, what is the most surprising piece of knowledge that not many people know about? And could you give an example of that? Um, so I would say how different materials interact with each other. Um, example would be how aluminum reacts to different temperatures and even weather. Um, so it expands and contracts uh, ever so slightly as it gets cold or hot, along with a lot of other materials. Um, for us in the technical world, 
Um, you got to be very careful with a lot of the components that you do use and the materials. Um, you got to be aware about how they're being heated or cooled um, and how they would react to your test results also. Yeah, of course. And I know because of your career that you have, you always have to keep that in mind. And how do robotics uh, help you in your job today? Um, mainly, I would say speed um, and accuracy. Uh, so as we would do what we would call an engineering type test, um, it's all hands on. So you would bolt it down um, <clears throat> and start testing uh, point to point with your voltmeters. Um, and the robotics speed that up uh, probably about 75% of that time. Um, so it brings it into your unit and the accuracy of the install is a lot quicker and a lot more accurate. Wow. What is the, if you, if you don't mind me asking, what is the starting salary for an electronic test technician or similar fields? Uh, right out of high school, I would say around 40,000, um, with the college education, starting off with associates as the basis. Now you're looking upwards from 50 to 80. Um, All right. So what strengths do you have that make you a good technician? Uh, I would definitely have to say resiliency. Um, so, I mean, as a test technician, you get a lot of failures, uh, figuring out them failures and bouncing back from them um, is, a, is a really big deal. So, yeah, definitely yeah, resiliency. Definitely, definitely you have to have resilience on making sure that when something just doesn't work to continue pushing on and trying to find a solution. So definitely, yeah. What would you tell kids who might think that they're not cut to pursue a career in technology? <laughs> well, uh, there's different levels of technology. Um, so really you can start almost wherever you want and you can expand from there. If something's not working, there's always a different avenue to go. Um, with, with technology, you got computers, you got robotics, um, you got hands-on. Um, there's, there's no limit to where you could end up um, happily too. Uh, so you can always expand um, and find your, your fitment. Definitely. Yeah, I, I can't agree with you more. There's such a widespread of STEM careers. So there's something for everybody. Oh, yeah. uh, do you have any mentors who inspired you to pursue a path that, that you are on today? And if so, how did they inspire you or what is a great advice that they gave you? I didn't have any mentors. Um, I, I led this career path um, out of my pure curiosity. Um, my passion to figure out and problem solve and troubleshoot. Um, it just kept me driving more and deeper. I just, there's no end to it. And the education and training that can never end. Um, information is definitely wealth and technology. Uh, yeah. yeah, there definitely a, a big factor. Teachers and students, please. Sorry, there's, there's an announcement. Let's give it a second. Okay, there you go. My my school finished with with their announcement. So actually, we do have another Q and A question from a seventh grader in Massachusetts, uh, Nisbet Middle School. What do you find most rewarding about your job? Most rewarding. Hmm. Well, it's leaving at the end of the day, the satisfaction of where my job ends up. Uh, so a lot of my tests, as long as they pass, I know that when they get into their assemblies, they will work and they will work perfectly. Um, that is the biggest satisfaction, knowing that where these components go, they could save lives, knowing that they're working correctly. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely a big rewarding part that you're making an impact in somebody's life. That's for sure. Super rewarding. So for my next question is, in thinking of the students watching today, 
what is one piece of advice that you would give to your younger self? Keep driving and never give up. Yeah, I can't agree with you more. Always, for anybody of those watching, if you guys probably have felt the pain of like giving up and not wanting to continue, and, and as, as James could tell you, engineering is a very hard career for sure. But if you continue thriving and pushing on, you could definitely succeed and go wherever you decide to go. So yeah, thank you. To, to expand on that, Enrique, um, yeah. you know, when you do hit a hard spot, stepping away from the situation, decompressing and coming back at it is always definitely the best way to get through it. Definitely, yeah. So for my next question is, what is one skill that test technicians must have? Focus. Um, definitely have to focus a lot. Um, you have to, you have to keep your focus on your troubleshooting, um, day-to-day -day basis, watching how your, your failures can come through or your passes come through. It's a big deal. Um, you can identify failures or passes, uh, before the, even, even before the machine notes it, um, just by focusing on what you're doing, um, yeah, definitely. So there is another Q&A question that just came in. And what additional training have you done to get to the level that you are now? There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so those are, you can do certificates. Um, you can do personal training. Um, there's soldering, um, which is a type of welding. Um, there's also training on bolts bolt meters, um, knowing your wattages and all that too. So electronics, uh, along with mechanical, um, I'm sure there's a whole bunch more I'm thinking of that can, that can make you an asset in uh, whatever team you end up in. So definitely, yeah, like you were saying before that you've done a lot of certificates and a lot of trainings throughout your career. So definitely, like you were saying, a lot of certification that you need, a lot of training to make sure that what you're testing is, you know, it's correct. And that when you're putting it onto the assembly line, it's still correct and can positively impact somebody's life. So definitely, yeah. So our next question is a fill in the blank question. So it's you have to fill in the blank. I am a blank and then finish the sentence with one word to describe yourself. And then if you could explain why did you choose that word? I am a fighter. <laughs> um, I would choose that word fighter. I'm very persistent. Uh, I want to I want to help people be more efficient, more proficient, um, and also keep driving through anything that they're having troubles with. Um, so, yeah, fighting, fighting to make everything better. Definitely, yeah, I can agree here. I, I could feel it that you've gone, gone, you've pushed a lot, and I, I, I can't agree with the word more that you're a fighter. I can't, I, I love that word. That's, I, that's a good choice. So, we do have another QA question. When you're troubleshooting, right, what steps do you usually follow? Mm. Steps in troubleshooting, um, that's a that's a difficult one because um, I mean you can be a troubleshooter by book um, or it can be a natural skill set for you uh, where you can you can be able to find what you're looking for as you go along without any any book to tell you what to look for um, normal steps depending on what you're doing for me and test um, it would be step one would be seeing what the failure was. Um, step two would be taking your component, um, putting it under a microscope, confirming that that area was the problem. Um, and if it wasn't, you would return back to your machine um, and do a few tests on the machine itself to confirm that it was either the component or the machine that caused the failure. Yeah, so definitely like um start taking down things, making sure that hey, it was not the machine, it was not I don't know the machine's gears that were wrong. So yeah, definitely. Yes. So now we have another uh, Q and A question from the gifted grade six class in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And at what age were you inspired to pursue what you are currently doing? Good question. Um, so 
I can't remember my exact age. I believe I was about 11, 12 years old um, when I, I first actually repaired a CB radio that also acted as an AM and FM radio also. Um, so I was at a junkyard one day um, with my dad and I found about six of them and I wanted to bring them all home. Um, and beyond all odds, I tore them all apart and I found one that was the easiest to fix. I learned how to solder from a friend of mine down the street or his older sister for that matter. Um, and I repaired this one CB radio and I got it working and I started learning a little bit about RF at that time and uh, never really thought too much of it until later on in life. Uh, I realized that I was actually fixing radio frequencies. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. again, that's another way I ended up with Raytheon um, in, t in test. Wow, that's super interesting that you're able to do that at such a young age. And we have another uh, Q and A question: Is in what way do you help your coworkers when they are having difficulties on their job? Uh, well, we definitely work as a team. Um, so ideas and reminders can come both ways. Uh, we help each other, so they help me. I help them. Um, it's mainly reminding. Uh, so when somebody comes into a situation. And at the time, can't remember what the solve was to it. Um, usually we have somebody that pops up and like, oh, yeah, hey, you remember? I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so we, we work together, uh, yeah, storing knowledge and sharing it with each other daily. Um, also taking notes, too. Yeah, it's definitely something. Sometimes you just forget to do one of the simple steps and somebody has to go behind you and be like, hey, you forgot to turn this on or turn this off. So, yeah, definitely. And I think for our last question, maybe you have more Q&A coming in through. What is something that you've done that you're really proud of? Uh, so there's a few. I think um, one of the top ones uh, would be definitely serving our country. In the U.S. Army. Definitely, yeah. I think I, I really appreciate your service, and I feel that uh, those you. watching should too. So I think that might end with yeah, that might be your last question. I don't see any more Q and A coming in through. So um, yeah. So thank you, thank you once again so much for coming, and um, thank you, James, for joining us today. I learned a lot personally. And thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah, we also want to thank RTX for partnering with us today on this episode. Also, a huge thanks to all of you for tuning in. To learn more about engineering and tech careers, go to Discovery's website at discovery.org. And be sure to join our next Chat with Changemakers in February during Engineers Week. Tune in on Thursday, February 20 at 1 p.m. Eastern for a special Introduce a Girl to Engineering Day. Chat with a high school and college student, Miranda, and star a and star a co-host of Discover E Engineering Challenge video series. Tune in to learn more about their journeys and stuff. See you all next time. Thank you.